Hi everybody, welcome to this week's LEGO Technic video. Today I'm going to show you my latest creation. It's a 3-speed automatic gearbox. Uh, now the point of difference of this gearbox is that unlike some of the other gearboxes I've presented in the past, rather than using some sort of mechanical uh, lift arm or lever to uh, switch gears once uh, torque has been detected, what I've done, I've actually connected the torque detector to a LEGO electrical switch. That switch can take on uh, one of three positions and then that switch drives uh, a servo motor, a power function servo motor and the advantage of that power function servo motor is that it can take on uh, one of three positions at exact 90 degree angles and that allows for a very clean uh, gear switching so for example you know the servo motor if you're not familiar with it can take on uh, you know like minus 90, 0 and 90 and that drives this uh, gear switching um, mechanism and because it only takes on exact positions uh, it's, it's very clean, whereas normally if it's mechanically driven to, to kind of move uh, those gears across on the axle, uh, they can sort of grind uh, if they're not in the exact position, and that's the advantage of using servo motor. So yeah, that was the idea of this gearbox, is to use the switch rather than a mechanical lever, and I'll present to you today uh, how well that worked. Alright, so first I'll just tell you a little bit about the actual uh, gear switching mechanics. So what I've got here is just uh, two axles with a series of gears on each. And the way the gear switching works is that you can actually kind of move this axle and join uh, different gears together to generate uh, different uh, gearing ratios. So for example, if the axle is all the way to the left, then we've got uh, this large gear driving a smaller gear. So it's a 20 driving a 16 and that gives us a, uh, I guess a higher gearing ratio, the output here on the left is going to go fast with, uh, with the input and then as we move the axle across what happens is that we've got the reverse, we've got the 16 driving the 20 so now we've got a lower gearing ratio and as you can see we're getting a, a low speed output and then finally if we move that uh, axle all the way across like that uh, we end up with the 12 driving a 24 so it gives us a 1 to 2 gearing ratio uh, which gives us the lowest gear. So that's the idea of the uh, gear changing mechanism and then this axle is simply driven into these one of these sort of three positions uh, by the servo motor and of course the servo motor because it operates in those exact 90 degree steps we get quite a uh, clean transition because really this axle has to be uh, lined up correctly for it to work well so if it's kind of in between the two gears you know you'll get kind of a, a crunching because you can't obviously engage uh, all the gears at the same time and expect the output to rotate correctly so it does have to be at those exact positions to work well. Uh, so that gear change mechanism that I just explained has been implemented underneath here you can see um, you know you can the servo motor driving that uh, like I demonstrated before it can go into one of the three positions so that's how that is driven. So now I'll tell you a bit about the torque detector so what we've got here is you know the overall motor driving the main axle through that gear changing mechanism and we've got the output on the right and that goes through this uh, torque detection differential and the way that works you're probably familiar with it but I'll just show you one more time uh, what you've got is uh, this kind of mechanism so we've got uh, for example the motor here on the right driving the output on the left and what we've got here is coming off the differential is this uh, small 12 tooth gear and that is connected to um, these smaller gears that have got some resistance on them. So what that means is because there's a resistance on that, the main uh, driving path is just straight through. But as soon as there's some loading on the output, what happens is that that uh, the output on the side will start rotating. So that's the idea of the uh, torque detector. So as soon as there's some loading on the output, that will start rotating and that will then drive the gearing that drives the um, electrical switch and that will then change gears at the correct moment depending on uh, the tensions that you set um, in that gearing mechanism. Okay and then the output from the torque detector I've got that driving like I said for that switch so this is the electrical switch uh, that I was talking about uh, it's pretty much got three positions you can put an axle kind of through the middle there to be able to drive that so the output of the torque detector pretty much drives oops, that way around. Uh, drives that uh, switch through a number of gears in order to just reduce the uh, angle that needs to rotate at because the switch is relatively sensitive so like I said it's got three positions one two and three 
Uh, now one issue I had to overcome uh, was the fact that the switch is relatively sensitive to uh, the rotation on that axle so the moment it kind of goes from uh, being fully to the left in that position it's being rotated just slightly it pretty much immediately uh, turns off uh, and then once you get past that center point it has to go all the way to the right to, to reverse. Uh, so what I needed, um, you know, what I didn't want to happen is that as soon as it's just a little bit of rotation on that uh, gear, uh, that torque detector, I didn't want that switch to switch immediately. So what I ended up doing is kind of creating a, a kind of a delay mechanism. And what I've got here is this kind of um, gear rack. And that, so what I've got is that this gear rack is driven from the torque detector then uh, takes some distance to move before it engages uh, this gear up here and then that engagement then starts driving and rotating uh, that electrical switch uh, so what that means is there's a, there's a bit of a delay between uh, you know you need to rotate the torque detector of sufficient uh, distance in order to start rotating that switch and switching gears and the benefit of that is of course is that you want to be able to control um, it under what loading the gear switch and by having I've got some elastic bands on then there by rotating it kind of pops backwards and it creates a certain amount of loading or tension on this axle that you need to overcome in order to move uh, that gear rack uh, and by adding an, or removing uh, some elastic bands you can kind of control the switchover point at which you know this uh, gear rack reaches the next gear in order to rotate the electrical switch for the uh, gear switching Okay, so that mechanism has been implemented in the gearbox on the right here. You can see it, uh, the gear rack down there with some elastics and things like that. Uh, this is the gearing that uh, converts from that uh, small eight tooth onto the electrical switch. And I'll just demonstrate how that works. So as I move that gear rack across, uh, these gears do not get engaged until it reaches the right distance. And once it reaches that distance, um, the electrical switch We'll start rotating and switch gears uh, through the servo motor. So you can see there that we'll go to from gear one to gear two. Then as we keep moving further forward, it'll move to gear three. And I've got uh, some more resistance implemented here in these rubber bands. So once it gets to that um, gear two, it then has to push through more resistance uh, to switch to gear three. So I can kind of control the uh, third gear switching point uh, with these elastic uh, bands going across the gear rack uh, as you can see. Uh, so that's how the uh, gear switching mechanism works. So we've got the torque detector driving that gear rack. Gear rack has a delay then drives the switch and the switch can go between one of three positions uh, to switch gears. And of course as soon as the loading uh, is removed from the output the gear rack will uh, move backwards and uh, and I need to have those elastic bands to restore the, uh, the switch back to the original position switching back. There were some interesting design issues to overcome with that gear rack mechanism. Uh, my first design pretty much looked like this. I had a lift arm and then underneath of the um, spacing I just had a regular Lego uh, thin brick with the, uh, the gear rack pieces on top and the problem was that it would kind of catch on the lift arm underneath so that was supported uh, on top of the lift arm. It could move like that and the, um, you know, the pins would kind of catch and, and you know, jam like that. Uh, one way around that that I found, I changed the uh, design of this to look more like that. So what I've done, I've just switched out uh, that thin Lego brick with a Lego tile and changed the order. And then now this way with the Lego tile being on, on the bottom there, uh, it gave us a very smooth uh, gear rack movement, uh, which was ideal for this design. Okay, so that explains how the gearbox has been designed. I'll now give you a practical demonstration of the gearbox in action. So I've got the battery box here mounted at the back. Just turn that on. Uh, you can hear the uh, large power function motor turning. The gears are rotating nicely underneath. And on the right here we've got the output. So currently we're in the highest gear. The uh, rotation is the highest. And of course as there's loading on the output, uh, the gearbox will switch to a lower gear. I'll just demonstrate that first uh, manually so I can switch that electrical switch and then as I switch that across in one position you can see servo motor, motor moving across and switching to the medium gear you can see the output's a little bit slower and then as I move it all the way across it goes to the lowest gear so that's the middle gear and high gear okay I'll now just demonstrate that um, you know, with the loading on the output so as I put loading on the output 
you can start seeing that gear rack starting to move, which is driven by the torque detector. And as I put enough loading on there, you can see it now switches to the middle gear, back to high gear, put loading on, middle gear, and then as I put even more loading on, it'll switch to the, the lowest gear and giving the most powerful output. And as you can hear, it's a relatively clean switch. I mean, there are positions, of course, with the extra loading on the gearing. Uh, when those gears do push to get pushed across and have to mesh, uh, there can be a, you know, a bit of a, a crunching sound there like that. But generally speaking, it's a, it's a good, smooth transition. So that is the three-speed automatic gearbox. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And... Please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.